One of the biggest issues that will be in your in-tray in Downing Street is undoubtedly um, Afghanistan and our, our involvement there. Um, it seems that uh, it's, it's a war that quite a few, lots of people in this country don't really understand. They don't understand why we're there, what we're doing there. Um, would you simply bring our troops home? No, I think in, in the shortest way I can answer the question is we should surge up to train up to get out, i.e. we can't go on as we are, where we're taking a bit of ground and then losing a bit of ground. We should be increasing our forces there, particularly the Americans increasing their forces there, to train up the Afghan National Army faster so they can secure the country themselves so we can bring our troops back home. Why is it important? Why are we there? I think if we left... The Taliban would take over a lot of the country, if not all of the country, and there would be a risk that those terrorist training camps would come straight back again. And we know that a lot of the terror plots of the past uh, were hatched by people who were trained in Afghan camps. We can't switch off to what is going on in the rest of the world. We want to have not a perfect Afghanistan, not some model democracy, but we want to have a country that is not a pariah state training terrorists. That's why we're there. There has, though, hasn't there been a failure to, to get this message over? Yes, I think part of the problem is that when we first went in to, I think two big problems, when we first went into Afghanistan in 2001 uh, and knocked away the Taliban government, which was the right thing to do, I think then the plan we had was overambitious. It was about creating this sort of perfect democracy in what is quite a um, medieval country. Uh, I think that was unrealistic. The second problem is that when we started the Iraq war, I think the eyes of the West of NATO turned away from Afghanistan. And that frankly, that when you're trying to help create a more secure country, you don't have much time. You cannot be there forever. The Afghan people don't want uh, foreign armies on their soil forever. The British public opinion doesn't want our troops to be there forever. So you've got to get on with the work of providing the security, training up the Afghan National Army, and leaving. That's what we now, I think, have a one last chance to do. That is what I hope President Obama will announce, and that is what we should support. I'm wondering what sort of place um, socially a, a conservative Britain would be. In, I'm thinking in particular about our near obsession with health and safety, for example. Mm. You, have, you have children at school these days that seemingly can't even play conkers without a risk assessment mm. being done. I mean, is, is this something that... Um, Conservative government would be trying to roll back the barriers of state. Definitely. Interference. I think we have, I want to see a lot more common sense in the way that we run our country, and I want to see an end to so much of the nonsense that we see, whether it is the massive extension of health and safety into every aspect of life, whether it's the fact that we treat in our schools, we treat the, the, the parents like children, we treat the children like parents, we have an obsession with a sort of rights culture in school, which I think is wrong. We've basically stopped our teachers being able to uh, administer any form of, of discipline or search for banned items. I think we need a big change in the way we run our country. And we also need, this is a difficult thing to say, we need also a different attitude towards risk. All things in life involve a degree of risk. And I think sometimes we're trying to uh, wrap everyone in cotton wool and pretend that you can't take risks in life. Life is full of risks and we have to accept that. So a lot more common sense and an end to the nonsense. Mr Cameron, thank you very much.